Hello everyone, my name is Spitfire, and welcome to another reaction. Today's reaction is uh, DWK's Totally Legit Recaps uh, Season 8. They're all weird. I think it's 4. Uh, 4, 8, no, 4. Yeah, 4, 8, and 13. Yeah, they're all weird episodes. Uh, fake it till you make it. Parent map and main six. Uh, I don't know much and I kind of forget much about season eight because I was the season I was kind of into some of the episodes I remember because I did check them out and watch them. Uh, I did react to them. Uh, some of them are still up, some of them are actually still down, some of them are weird. Uh, but these are all episodes that I easily forgot. Except Fake it till you make it because it has. It's, it's weird, man. Uh, but the other ones I kind of forgot. And I don't know who watched them, so. Hopefully, the recaps will help me with that. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Go. Here we go. Man, I wish I could. Woke. <laughs> Hashtag woke. Wake up, people. So, Rarity's like, Fluttershy, I need you to run my shop in Manhattan. Uh, no, anyone else, literally anyone else. Okay, okay look, look, there's an explanation here, man. Okay, For, so, yeah. Sassy's been borrowing else, but... money from the mob to get the fat sucked out of her ass and put in her face or something, and I gotta do this fashion <laughs> show in Canterlot tomorrow night to raise enough money to pay him back, or they're gonna fucking whack her, man. So, close the shop for a day. Dude, I totally would, but I can't because the shop is cursed. You've been taking too many of those diet pills. No fakesies. Remember what? last year when I accidentally bashed Zipper Will's skull in? <laughs> great. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> okay, well, her father found my store and placed a gypsy hex on it. Now the clothes are possessed, and should anyone try to close great. the shop before 6 p.m. or 4.30 on Sundays, they'll drag them down to Tartarus. I need you to find and destroy all the demonic dresses while keeping the shop open. Only then will the curse be broken. Can't Twilight or Starlight deal with this? It seems like their area of expertise. That would make sense, but they're testifying yes. at Trixie's court date tomorrow. You're the only one I can trust to do this, Fluttershy. That's why I came to you first. Everyone, are you just saying busy, uh, No way, bro. Fluttershy. You're my fucking homegirl for life, and I got faith in you. Now, come Everyone's on. There's no time to waste. Flutters. So, they head on over to Rarity for you, and Fashion Horse is all, okay. Once you've identified the tainted garments, you can lock them in the corrupted couture containment compartment in the back of the shop. That should hold them and prevent them from harming you or any customers. Then we can figure out a way to destroy them. It's a classic SCP. And Butternut's like, oh yeah, speaking of customers, how the fuck do I deal with those? I'm like, I'm fucking shy, bro. Oh, Johnny, come now. Yeah. You've conquered your shyness a thousand times over. Yeah, so doesn't my repeated regression speak to some kind of clinically significant anxiety disorder? I need someone to help no. me. That's part yes. of the curse too, man. Only one person can run the shop at a time. Brady, the situation has a ridiculous number of stipulations, and it's getting pretty fucking hard to believe. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously only the most outlandish convergence of coincidence and dire emergency would ever make it necessary for you to run this place by yourself, but unfortunately for us, that's exactly what's happened. So, Rarity fucks cool. off and then Butters starts scouring the shop for the evil clothes, but then, just when she has to help her first customer, she gets possessed by a demonic pantsuit. And dude's like, what's the right. thread count of this shirt? And she's all, man, fuck thread count, that shirt'll sure make girls wanna suck your wiener. Oh. I'll take three. Fortunately, after checkout, Fluttershy regains control, and she's like, oh my god, you guys, I just told that guy a piece of clothing would get him laid just so he'd buy it. That, uh, that was immoral. Nice. She's about to strip down and lock the clothes in containment, but then she realizes the only reason that sale even happened was because of the unearthly bullshitting powers the suit gave her. So, Yellow Quiet makes a deal with the Devil's Prada and decides to use <laughs> its Great. unholy might until she completes her quest. However, her gambit proves foolish as the abominous apparel begins to corrupt her psyche and she becomes drunk on its power. And she's like, man, when I got caught up in that whole man. Iron Will thing, it felt so good to finally shit on other people like they've been doing to me my whole life, but they were always scared or pissed off. Now I get it. I was missing the most important ingredient. Bullshit. This is amazing, you guys. If you master the art of bullshit, not only can you treat people like garbage, cool. 
They'll think you're cool. Master. The soft pads all girl this you. The level of bullshit. Oh, God, you're right. I'm losing myself. And so, summoning okay, all her mental strength, Buttersquash rids herself of the silken monstrosity before it consumes her, and we can all breathe that a sigh of one. relief. Oh, God. Oh. No. It seems we've gone right from the frying pan oh, into gosh. the fires of hell, ladies and gentlemen. If this outfit yes. is cursed, then this one is damned. It even has a mind control headpiece to funnel its eldritch madness straight into poor Nutter's brain and the raccoons stare on in horror as she instantly yeah. begins speaking in tongues. It's a totally live ensemble with the little like the music sparkle and the thought sparkle. Whoa, that pony is great. Fortunately, our Jimmys can rest easy knowing that Flesh yeah. I only uttered this vile gibberish because she was literally bewitched by a fedora. Now, if she'd done it of her own accord, the good times would be over and the show would be ruined forever. No, not like yeah. the last ten times. I mean, really ruined Super Surreal Aziz this time. And as if things couldn't get any spookier, we go straight from woke to can't wake up as yet another godless gown <laughs> thrusts itself on poor Butterball and up. begins sapping her very well. Uh, I can't wake up. Oh, let me just say that as a fucking adorable little get up there, and I'm glad that they went with a full out like Victorian influenced gothic instead of some half assed ripped t shirt, leather boots, yep. emo shit. You know exactly what I'm talking cool. about. You can probably picture it in your head as well as I can. And, you know, yeah. this show has a pretty good track record with goth ponies. This made me yes, think about something. Does. All of these outfits, I, I, even this one, are fucking cute. It's the personalities that suck. So, like, why is it that all the cool clothes are taken by subcultures full of annoying, shitty people? How come the rest of us have to walk around in jeans Great. and t-shirts while assholes, retards, and killjoys get to wear the fun stuff? Anyway, Fluffernutter realizes she's being worn by these three outfits and descending into madness, so she decides to make the ultimate sacrifice, and she's all, listen, you guys, you have to go get Twilight, but I can't let these demon clothes leave this shop and all inflict right. their malice oh, upon gosh. this city. I'll hold them off for as long as I I can, but if you're not back in time, I'll close this shop early and drag them down to hell with me. And Soft Pad's like, word. So, they go get Twiggles, word. who's working on Trixie's plea bargain, and she tries to cast a counter curse, but it doesn't work because she's a nerd who has no power in the realm of fashion. Fortunately, just as Fluttershy cool. is about to succumb to the ghoulish garments, Rarity returns, and together she and Twilight perform a fashion exorcism, banishing the demons to the outer realms, breaking the curse, and leaving the outfits on fashion. And Twiggy's like, why didn't you guys just tell me this shit was happening? You think I'm gonna tell you to fuck off and let Fluttershy fight a bunch of demons by herself? I just did what Rarity told me to because I'm a pushover. Yeah, I guess I didn't really think this through. Yes, clearly Good nobody job, involved thought this scenario through and everything that happened here was ridiculous and could have very easily been avoided. Those outfits were cute though, but I still don't get it, Rarity. Why'd you pick me for this shit? Darling, compadre, because not only are you the nicest person I've ever met, you're way tougher than you think and in a way that nobody else I know is. I know you think you're a huge puss Great. since you have anxiety problems and they never seem to get much better, but you never stop fighting them. I figured if anyone had the inner strength to fight some demon clothes and resist their wicked temptations while suffering the hell that is customer service, it'd be you. Oh, and it kind of was. No fucking sense. Whatever, fuck it, I tried. <laughs> Okay, I need to address something. Now, I don't have a address problem it, with the new intro. I think it's fine. No, you knew it's good. I'm glad we've got Ember and Steve and Sassy representing. That's all fucking stupendous. No, what I'm scratching my head over is cool. something so fucking minor that it took me eight episodes to notice it, and yet it became nothing short of baffling when I stopped to think about it. What is no, that? up with this picture. I know we're doing the friendship school thing and this is supposed to be a class photo, but we know this definitely isn't the entire student body of the school. Now you're probably thinking like, dude, this Not is really. just a shot for the intro that's meant to convey the idea of a friendship school. And I'm like, yeah, that part makes sense. But sure. this is also the sure. actual photo they took at the end of the season premiere. So I keep trying to imagine Twilight's in-universe rationale for this particular assortment of students. And every time I do, all I can figure is that her logic for this photo was 
the same as the show staff's logic for the photo. She was like, Wait, okay, what? girls, let's put ourselves front and center here. Elements of Harmony, that'll be great for marketing this thing. Then let's get these minorities in the middle here right behind us. Excellent for publicity. And we just need a few more students to fill in the gaps back there. And bam, that looks like a fucking friendship school, doesn't it? This photo is a promo shot, cool. both in our reality and in the show's universe. That shit's fucking deep, right? It's almost like you can overanalyze anything and make semi-profound sounding assertions by playing up and then tenuously connecting insignificant details. But why yes. would you waste your time? You can because call it's them fun. Smells, but I call them essence. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. So, Sunburst, like, why am I yelling? Well, dude, it's because you're fucking ecstatic. You and Glimmy Glam get to go on your first friendship right. rap mission together, and where should it take you but back where the madness all started? Oh, so there's this part where Spike offers to give Sunburst some advice because he's, quote, been on his fair share of missions, and twice, like, you've only been on one, dude, to which Spike replies, <laughs> That's that shit. The only way I can interpret this is that Spike is bluntly acknowledging job, his own Good insignificance. Job. He's just like, yeah, I've only been on one mission, but hey, I mean, that's my fair share, right? Wouldn't want to give me too much time in the spotlight. Anyway, Glamour's like, man, it's not that I Good don't want to go home. I just fucking hate my dad. He treats me like I'm still a kid or something. Well, I mean, you are still his kid. Yeah, but how am I supposed to show everyone what a mature adult I am if my dad just, like, won't leave me alone? God. Yeah, I get what you're saying. My mom's so annoying. She's always trying to make me, like, do stuff or whatever. <sighs> what a bitch. All right. Oh my God, right? So they get back home and we meet Glim Dad. And the moment I saw him, I had two thoughts. First of all, he dresses snappy as fuck. And more importantly, now we know where Starlight yeah. gets her noticeably off-center hairline and concealing comb-over technique. Anyway, he's stoked to see his snuggy wuggy sugar lumpy pumpy wumpy glimmy kins. But Glamour's like, oh my what? god, Dad, why do you have to be so embarrassing? I'm a big girl now. Oh my. Who is this taste? <laughs> Oh. Right here. Hey, son, oh, no. you never told me you had a sister. Our village needs the same thing you do, Sunburst. A clear plan for the future. Oh, God, wait, no, she's just like my mom. Never mind. Ew, <laughs> gross. You guys can have your fucking milk threads or whatever, but I'm out of this yeah. one. Sorry. <laughs> So, Glim Dad and Burst Mom, aka Stellar Flair or Stella as I call her, are having a little bourgeois beef here because she wants to get rich by turning the town into a mall and he wants to keep the peasants out. And Stella's like, don't you know how much cash we could funnel into our pockets by setting up a retail strip in a gated community like this? Cool. The exclusivity will practically do the marketing for us and we'll have businesses competing for real estate and customers competing to get in. Yeah, and who's gonna work at all those shops? Filthy mud ponies and zebras. Next thing you know, they'll be building a low-income housing outside the town walls, which will be covered in Great. graffiti, by the way. God damn it, Dad! My friend Maud is a filthy mud pony, and I find that fucking offensive. <laughs> Sorry, Jim Mom Jinx. And Sunburst like, okay, this is obviously the friendship problem. We fix this shit as fast as we can, and then we mash. So, Sunburst convinces his mom that making more money by exploiting the proletariat won't fill the gaping void left in her soul and her cooch since his father died, and Glimmy convinces her dad that mud ponies are people too. They make up and suck each other off a little, and these guys are like, okay, sounds good, see you guys at heart swarming. Don't you want to stay for a minute and catch up? We would love to, but oh no, look at my leg, I have a compound fracture, better get to the hospital, see ya. Unfortunately, they have to stay because the taillights won't turn on, but on the plus yeah. side, we get to see this. Oh, Starlight. Now, I've seen some people saying this shit looks emo, but no, no, no. See, we've got too many skulls and horns going on for emo. Then we got some chains up yeah. here, and this eyeball, and these crystals. It's a grimy, alchemical horror aesthetic combined with guitars and leather straps, and I know exactly what that combination entails. 
You were slamming that black metal, weren't you, Gloomy? Oh, sure. If anyone <laughs> yeah. brings it up now, you're like, ah, eh, yeah, I used to like that stuff back when I was a kid. But no, that was your shit back in the day. You were up there in your room after school in your leather boots and bands, face all painted up, screeching your lungs out and banging your head over those blast beats. You can't fucking lie to me, dude. You can fool everyone else, but I've been there and <laughs> cool. I can read this shit like a fucking Book. Anyway, while Glindad's trying to convince Starlight to wear the traditional garb of their people, Stellar Stella here takes her son to meet these chicks, and this one's like, oh, hello, uh... Sunburst. Sunburst. We all think you're really cute and would love to dick you. Date. Date you, but we can't decide who gets to go first. Won't you help us? Mom, do you think I'm retarded? Well, you're 32 and you still haven't gotten your dick wet, so I figured it's a possibility. Sorry for trying to help. The only fucking I want Great. right now is for you to fuck off. Then Sunburst realizes that this whole fucking mess with their parents is the friendship problem, and Glim Glam's like, Why couldn't we have been sent to stop a war or something? So, Starlight would rather there be some kind of massive international conflict full of bloodshed and death than deal with their own interpersonal problems. You know, I always hear people complaining right. about the ponies being out of character for whatever reason, and I always think it's bullshit, but I gotta say, this has to be one of the most in-character things I've ever heard. So, they try to talk about it, the kids end up throwing a fit, the parents turn up the guilt, and hooray, everyone's mad, and Glimmy's like, okay, so the problem is that we think our parents are annoying, and they treat us like idiots. Yeah, pretty much. That's not yeah. a fucking friendship problem. That's just every parent-child relationship. Yeah, but the the map says it is. Fuck the map. Not only did it make us do a two-for-one, the second problem isn't even a problem. It's just part of life. Well, life does feel like one giant problem sometimes. Yeah, and there's an easy solution for it, but I'm not trying to go that far yet. I'm calling oh, shenanigans. Great. This is bullshit, and there's only one way to fight bullshit. So they both go get their respective parents, and they're like, listen. Listen, if we don't come to some kind of resolution here, this mission's never gonna end. You don't want that, and we don't want that, so let's just do what we do at dinner parties and act like reasonable people. <clears throat> Sorry, we yelled at you guys. We just got carried There's away, no and you are totally we'll not smothering pains in the ass. Yes, and we're sorry for being so overbearing, and you are totally not difficult, ungrateful children. <laughs> Fucking got Good it. Job. Suck my dick, friendship map. Anyway, we're out. See you guys at Har Swarming. Don't expect gifts. Great. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Well, guess who's back, back again. Now, those of you who've been around here for a while know how much I love Chrysalis and- Yes, I know. We have been planning this for quite some time. Uh, what's going on here? Which means you yeah. will be able to use them too. Hey, Chrissy Doodle Dandy, who are you talking to there? Why, coffee's rarity? Because Princess Twilight and her friends control the elements of harmony. Oh, you're uh, hanging up pictures of ponies and talking to them like they're actually there. Well, all, all I can say is welcome to the club. There's uh, free drinks and group weeping sessions every Friday. Anyway, as you might be able to surmise, Buggy cool. Boo's been going through a rough patch ever since she got glim glammed. She's been living out in the woods for God knows how many months and has reached that critical intersection of isolation, misanthropy, and psychological instability at which one of three things is bound yeah. to happen. To a person. The first and most Break. obvious is suicide, which for most of us is the best solution because, as you know, when we die, we go to a question. The, the problem no. is Chrissy's already no. there and no. it doesn't seem to be working out, so that's a no go. The second option is taking responsibility for your fuck ups, accepting the fact that in all likelihood the majority of your misfortune is the result of your own poor character and laziness, and then trying to become a better person, but fuck that. So the third option is this. Thank you, Applejack. Thank you, yeah. Applejack. Complete Thank you. break. Thank you.
Yeah, uh, a complete tulpas. She's breakdown. Main six tulpas. Not only that, Chrissy's concocted some sort of unholy magic-fueled alchemy that can turn her imaginary friends into bootleg waifus. And she's like, "All right, you dumb horse, listen up. We're gonna find the elements of harmony and use their power to put you bitches into mass production." Seeing as Equestria's main export nice. is waifus, flooding the market with cheap knockoffs will destabilize its entire economy, causing civil unrest, which I will exploit by disguising myself. It does happen as a in real life too. So let's do it. And the show. to the disenfranchised yeah. mass. I'll whip them into a fervor, lead a rebellion, topple the equestrian government, and seize power. Then I can take away Starlight Glimmer's friends and ruin her life just like she did to me. Why don't we just kill her? No, 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 listen, that's not how evil plots work. There's gotta be like machinations and subterfuge and shit, and then a big reveal where you're yeah, like, ah, the remember me? And they're like, my no. favorite villains. And then you roll the world and get all the hugs. Uh, servants. I meant servants, powering servants. <laughs> Gay. I say we oh, break her spine and make her watch while we kill her friends. What? What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> Bitch, you tell me. Anyway, while Chrissy's doing whatever I just said, Twiggles, Glimmy, and the crew are traveling into the woods to find an excuse to be in the woods. And Twiggy's like, I made it a schedule for the thing we're doing. But Dashie's all, schedules? I don't like those. I don't like loud noises. I do. Holy fuck. I like stuff, but I didn't bring it. I don't like stuff, but I did. <laughs> Come on, Starlight. Right, now it's you your, all your stuff. Can't we just assume everyone's watched the show? <laughs> Why do you always have to be such a contrarian pain in the con, Starlight? <laughs> Made you do it for me. Whoa, well played. I'm next level, bro. I like how in this episode, Glimmer finally feels like a legitimate part of the crew. All the ambivalence towards her is gone, and she's not constantly spouting horse remorse. She's just another part of this Great. jambalaya of <laughs> neurosis that on? is the main cast. What is going on? I'm confused. So, meanwhile, Chrissy's realizing that all of her tulpa golems are shitty people, and she's like, Hey, stop being a bunch of pathetic assholes. Takes one to make one. God damn it, why don't you respect me? Because we're just parts of you, cool. and you hate yourself? I don't hate myself, I hate Starlight Glimmer. Uh, let me see, we got Fluttershy, Applejack, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and me. Technically, you're the Starlight Glimmer of the group. You know what? I hate you. Oh, exactly. no. Oh, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Twilight, stop whining. Holy shit, everybody's getting lost and mixed up and you're like, huh, oh, my retreat is off to a great star. Shut the fuck up, you're gonna bitch, at least make it entertaining like Rarity does. Nobody wants to hear you passive aggressively pissing and moaning under your breath. Jesus Christ, these little horses, man. You know, it's been so many years and I've spent so many hours with these characters that they just feel like family members at this point and every time I watch yeah, I, episode, yeah, I, I end up agree. arguing with at least one of them. Then again, I can't really say shit. Imagine what it's like to be Twilight Sparkle and I don't mean like, ooh, I'm a pretty pony, that's my fetish, you fucking degenerates. I mean, think about what it would mean to live her life. Just a minute ago, you were this snippy, antisocial nerd girl working your way through Celestia's pony college, humping books from morning till dawn, and now, only a few years later, you are right. your entire nation's only competent the book ruler, as well as the leader that. of its primary defense force, which is comprised of this group of chicks who, despite being like family to you are undeniably a bunch of crazy cunts. At least once a year, for going on a decade now, the world has nearly ended, often putting said friends in mortal danger and leaving it solely to you to rescue them and everyone else. Basically, there was one time it didn't all fall on your shoulders and you spent that day in a bucket full of changeling jizz. Now it's the current year and not only <laughs> yeah. do you have two personal protégés to keep track of, you're running an entire school that might start a war if you fuck it up. You have to be a ruler, a soldier, a teacher, and a role model all at the same time while staying sane enough to maintain these interpersonal relationships that have given your life meaning. So yeah, never mind. I'm, I'm full of shit. Twiggy, if you cool. want to complain, uh, you're entitled to it more than literally anyone else in the world. Anyway, got off topic there. So Chrissy finally gets her shit together and finds the elements and as usual realizes just a moment too late that she fucked up. See, as we all know these fucking things exist to protect Equestria and nothing is more paramount to its security yeah. and prosperity than producing the choicest, highest quality cutie pies. So of course the elements are imbued <laughs> with spike. waifu quality control magic. As soon as the bootlegs get within range they get turned into magic goo and then 
wood comes out. Usually you get the wood first and then the magic goo comes out, but whatever, suspension of disbelief. <laughs> so who Good. fucking cares cool. that they changed it from the leaked version? Stop getting mad about everything. Yeah, you guys. I'm, I'm talking to you. Stop getting mad about every fucking thing. Just enjoy the show for once. Jesus fucking Christ. So, the main seven get to their campsite, and it's all fucked up, but they're just like, Meh, that sucks, but whatevs, and that's what this all amounted to. Chrissy, congratulations, you've managed to moderately inconvenience your mortal enemy. You know, Bugaboo's always been my favorite villain in the show, but it was Ooh. mostly because she had an awesome design and a very sexy voice. My dick has a lot to say in my opinions. But now, taken together with all her past appearances, this episode makes something very plain. Chrysalis is a fucking loser, and I love it. She's bitter, lonely, has no self-awareness, fucks up everything she tries to do, and then blames it on everyone else. Chrissy, I love you, but you are like the villainy equivalent of an incel. God fucking help you, dude. God fucking help you. Cool. Nice. No, 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 listen, that's not how evil plots work. There's got to be, like, machinations and subterfuge and shit, and then a big reveal where you're like, ha ha, remember me? And then they go like, oh, no! And then you... <laughs> I love that. I love this breakdown. All right, see you guys at the outro. I'm pretty sure I'm almost done with the series. I know what I'm going to do afterwards. Oh, uh... Yeah, these were fun. Uh, I love DWK stuff. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do afterwards. He, I think he's still doing Season 9 stuff, but I think he's kind of slowed down on Season 9 stuff. So, yeah. Um, but I am going to finish it as much as I can, and when he makes new stuff, I'm definitely going to jump on that. But right now, I'm trying to finish this stuff right now, but these were all good episodes. But like I said, Love DWK stuff does really great work. Uh, literal, original rank will be in the description if you want it. Uh, go subscribe. He's great. Uh, these episodes are great. Uh, not much to really say during them, except for the last one where he actually, you know, brings up some actually points. It's what I like when he actually brings up a talking point, which he does often, but not all the time. So, yeah, these are all great. Uh, see you guys next time, next episodes. Uh, peace out, and bye. Put all of you into a castle full of a thousand chests. And one of the chests contains an item required for you to continue the quest. And all of the other unopened containers are mimics and traps. So you'll have to open them all to recover the item, which is a map that will lead you into a complex dungeon with enough gold to make the whole team rich. But you better be ready to go to battle with the demon lord and a lich.